Look up. What do you see? We see space, an eternal mystery. But if you think the space age peaked in the 60s, you are dead wrong. Because right now, we are writing the boldest chapter in human history. For 50 years, we looked up and we dreamed. Today, we are not just dreaming, we are building. We are not only hunting for alien life, but we are actively preparing to build the first city on another planet. This isn't science fiction. This is our immediate, real-world plan. And it's all happening because of three pillars driving this new space race. Today, we are diving into the freshest and most mind-blowing space news. We'll learn how the Webb telescope allowed us to smell the atmosphere of a planet 120 light-years away. We'll find out why the moon is the absolute key to our future. And finally, we will break down how the biggest rocket in history promises to make humanity a multi-planetary species. Buckle up. This is the new space race. Remember those gorgeous two-dimensional images of galaxies from Hubble? Forget them. The James Webb Space Telescope isn't just an upgrade, it's an entirely new sense of sight. It sees the universe in infrared light. It's like putting on special glasses that cut through the dust and show us what's been hidden for billions of years. But its ultimate mission isn't just nebulae. Its ultimate mission is life. Webb is a time machine that can analyze starlight passing through a distant planet's atmosphere. Essentially, it allows us to read the chemical composition of that air. And here's the first bombshell, the planet WASP-18b. This is a ultra-hot Jupiter, but Webb did something incredible. It created the first-ever 3D temperature map of this hellish atmosphere. Imagine this. The side facing its star reaches 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's so hot that the water molecules present there literally break apart into atoms. We were able to pinpoint a hot spot and see how it's influencing the planet's entire circulation. This gives us crucial insight into how exoplanet atmospheres are both destroyed and sustained. But Webb's true target is a world named K218b. It's 120 light years away and is arguably the most promising habitable candidate we have ever found. This planet belongs to a class called Hycians, or ocean worlds. It's slightly larger than Earth, has a dense hydrogen atmosphere, and scientists calculate that beneath that atmosphere is a gigantic ocean of liquid water. And here is the breaking news. By analyzing the light from K2-18b, Webb detected strong signals for methane and carbon dioxide, pretty standard gases. But alongside them, it found a potential trace of a gas called dimethyl sulfide. Remember that name, dimethyl sulfide. On Earth, this gas is produced in large quantities by only one thing, life. Specifically, it's released by marine phytoplankton. Now let's jump a little closer to home. While Webb scans distant worlds, we are getting ready to return to the moon. The Artemis program is not a repeat of 1969. Back then, we flew, took a picture of the flag, and left. This time, we are flying to stay. Artemis's target is the moon's south pole. Why there? Because in the shadowed craters, where sunlight never reaches, lies water ice. And ice on the moon isn't just water for drinking. It's rocket fuel. You can split water into hydrogen and oxygen to refuel rockets for that next, bigger leap to Mars. 
Artemis II, planned for 2026, will orbit the moon with a crew, checking all the systems. And then, Artemis III, 2027, will land astronauts, the first woman and the first person of color on the surface. But here is the major shift. The success of this mission rests squarely on the private sector. For the first time ever, NASA is not building the lander itself. Instead, they have contracted the delivery of astronauts to the surface to a private company. That task falls to SpaceX Starship, specifically adapted as the HLS, Human Landing System. This is a total paradigm shift. The government is acting as the customer, and private industry is the contractor. This drastically reduces cost and speeds up development. Without this commercial revolution, the journey to Mars would remain a pipe dream. The Moon is our proving ground, our first deep space gas station, and Starship is the vehicle making that route possible. And now we come to Elon Musk's ultimate goal and the defining dream of those who look up, Mars. Musk has repeatedly stated, our civilization must become a multi-planetary species, and his instrument for this is Starship. Starship isn't just a rocket, it is an interplanetary transport and passenger vessel. Its goal? To deliver 100 people and 100 tons of cargo to Mars per flight. We don't need a temporary base, we need a city. But there are two critical engineering hurdles to clear before we can do this. The first and most difficult, on-orbit refueling. To make the journey to Mars, Starship must be fully fueled. That requires sending up to 8 to 10 tanker ships to Earth orbit to transfer their propellant to the one Mars-bound Starship. This is an unprecedented, complex logistical ballet. The second challenge is autonomy. The first ships won't just carry hardware, they will carry robots, like Optimus, to prepare the infrastructure and build shelters. These robots will seek and mine resources, specifically ice in the Martian soil, which can also be used to make rocket fuel. The biggest threat to a crew on Mars is radiation. Mars lacks a dense atmosphere and a strong magnetic field like Earth. Cosmic radiation is a killer. That's why the first settlers will need to live in specialized modules and use underground or dirt-covered shelters. But these are obstacles we are ready to face. We've unlocked the secrets of distant stars, built a staging ground on the moon, and now we are ready for the next great leap making the Red Planet our second home. We are living in the most exciting era of space history. JWST is showing us what is out there. Artemis is showing us how to build the road. And Starship is the vehicle that will carry us to our multi-planetary future. Now, I want to hear from you. Considering all the worlds we talked about today, which exoplanet would you visit if you had your own starship? Drop your answer in the comments below. Hit that like button, subscribe, and never stop looking up.